Peter stood amidst the chaos in the council's castle, his mind racing. The last time he had stood here, he was a new vampire facing judgment. This time, he was in the center of a rebellion, the lines between friend and foe blurred. Adrian, his sire, was leading the rebel vampires against the council's enforcers. He had always been a loner, a rule breaker, but seeing him in this new light was jarring. Peter watched as Adrian fought, his movements precise and deadly, his eyes ablaze with determination. Beside him, Serafina, the woman he had come to love despite the circumstances, struggled against her chains. She met his gaze, her eyes filled with defiance and an unspoken plea. She wanted him to choose, to stand with her against the council. Peter felt a knot in his stomach. He knew he had to make a choice, but he was not ready. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the room, and a group of council enforcers broke through the rebel lines. They headed straight for Serafina, intending to take her down. Peter's heart pounded in his chest as he saw them approach. He knew what he had to do. Summoning his strength, Peter broke free from his chains and lunged at the attackers. He fought them off, his vampire abilities giving him an edge. But the enforcers were strong, and there were too many of them. As he was engaged with one, another slipped past him, heading straight for Serafina. No. Peter shouted, but it was too late. The enforcer plunged a silver stake into Serafina's heart. She gasped, her eyes wide with shock before they slowly faded. She fell to the ground, lifeless. Serafina. Peter cried out, rushing to her side. He cradled her in his arms, his heart shattering into pieces. He had lost. He had failed to protect the one he loved. Enraged and heartbroken, Peter turned his grief into strength. He stood up, his eyes glowing fiercely. He launched himself at the enforcers with renewed vigor, taking them down one by one. Seeing Peter's ferocity, the other rebels rallied. The tide of the battle turned, and slowly, the council's enforcers were overwhelmed. Adrian, seeing an opportunity, led a final charge, breaking through the council's defenses. The castle fell silent as the last of the enforcers were defeated. But the victory was bitter for Peter. He knelt beside Serafina's lifeless body, his heart heavy with grief. Adrian approached him, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. Peter, we won, he said, his voice filled with sorrow. But at a great cost. Peter nodded, tears streaming down his face. What now, he asked, his voice barely a whisper. Now, Adrian replied, we bring change. We make sure her death wasn't in vain. As the sun began to rise, casting long shadows in the devastated castle, Peter stood up. He looked at the rising sun, feeling a strange mix of grief and determination. He had lost someone he loved. But he had also found a purpose. He would fight for the freedom Serafina had dreamed of. He would challenge the council and the ancient laws that bound them. However, as he looked at the horizon, he couldn't shake off a nagging feeling. The council was defeated, but not destroyed. And he knew, they would come back, stronger and more ruthless. As he prepared for the coming battle, he couldn't help but wonder, who else would he lose in this fight for freedom? In the wake of the battle, the rebel vampires had turned the council's castle into their stronghold. Peter, now a leader among them, spearheaded their efforts to bring about change. He was driven by a singular goal, to make sure Serafina's death wasn't in vain. The council, although defeated, was far from destroyed. The surviving members had retreated into the shadows, licking their wounds and planning their return. 
they wouldn't give up their power so easily, and Peter knew that. One night, a spy brought news of a planned attack by the council. They were gathering their forces, preparing for a strike that could potentially wipe out the rebellion. Peter realized that the inevitable confrontation he had been dreading was close at hand. Meanwhile, the other forces that Anastasia had warned Peter about started to reveal themselves. There were rumors of strange occurrences, of vampires turning feral and attacking their own kind, of shadowy figures seen at the edges of Veilcrest. It was as if some unseen power was influencing the events, adding more chaos to the already volatile situation. Peter, Adrian, and the other leaders of the rebellion gathered to discuss their plan of action. They knew they were outnumbered and outpowered, but they couldn't afford to lose. The future of their kind depended on it. As the day of the attack neared, Peter found himself visited by a mysterious figure. It was Anastasia, the head of the council. Her sudden appearance was shocking, but what she said was even more so. I didn't come here as an enemy, Peter, she said, her voice calm. I came to warn you. She spoke of a powerful ancient artifact known as the Sanguine Orb. It was said to hold immense power, enough to control or destroy all vampire kind. The council had been protecting it for centuries, but now it was in the hands of a rogue group of vampires, the ones causing the strange occurrences in Veilcrest. They planned to use the orb during the battle, Anastasia said. If they succeed, it will be the end of us all. Peter was taken aback. He realized the enormity of the situation. This was not just a fight against the council anymore. It was a fight for survival, a fight against an enemy that threatened to wipe out their existence. As Anastasia disappeared into the night, Peter was left with a heavy burden. He had to lead his people into a battle against the council, find a way to stop the rogue vampires, and protect the very existence of his kind. And time was running out. As he prepared for the coming battle, Peter couldn't help but wonder, was he ready to face this monumental challenge? And could they possibly emerge victorious against such overwhelming odds? The fate of all vampires hung in the balance, and the final confrontation was just on the horizon.